No commercial interest support was used to fund this activity. The IHS Clinical Support Center designates this live activity for one hour of AMA PRA Category 1 credit and one contact hour for nurses. To obtain a certificate, you must attend this entire webinar and complete the post-webinar survey that will be emailed to you. By the end of this webinar, participants will be able to, one, describe the Affordable Care Act and American Indian exemption, two, access the benefits of ACA enrollment by American Indians and Alaska Natives, and third, leverage the ACA to provide cancer care services for American Indian and Alaska Natives. Questions will be answered during the last few minutes of the webinar. Please type your questions into the question chat box on the lower right-hand side of the screen. At this time, again, we welcome Tinka for this afternoon's presentation. Great. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I just want to thank the National Native Network for offering me um, this time to talk to you guys about the Affordable Care Act and cancer care services in Indian country. Um, so I will show my screen. Hold on just a second. Okay, so, so let's get started. I just want to first of all talk about um, the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board and what we do, what our mission is, and our history. So our mission is to provide quality public health support and healthcare advocacy to the tribal nations of the Great Plains by utilizing effective and culturally credible approaches. Um, we were founded in 1986. We used to be known as the Aberdeen Area Tribal Chairman's Health Board and were established by the chairpersons and presidents of the 18 member entities that we serve. Um, we're a liaison between Muted. Area Indian Health Service, which is now is known as the Great Plains Area Indian Health, Indian Health Services and the Great Plains Tribes, which can be a little confusing, but we are the Great Plains Tribal Chairman's Health Board and we also are a liaison between the Great Plains Indian Health Service, if that helps clarify for you. Um, and our purpose is to provide American people in the Great Plains area with advocacy efforts, effective communication, and participation in regard to the Great Plains Area Indian Health Service, federal and state health agencies, and other governmental and human service entities on all health matters. So here's a map of who we serve. Um, to talk about the Navigator program, our goals are to increase knowledge and awareness of the health insurance marketplace and resources to select insurance. We also assist uninsured and uninsured American Indians and Alaska Natives in North Dakota and South Dakota with navigating the health insurance marketplace and enrolling into health insurance plans. So the benefits of the Affordable Care Act are many. Um, there are three um, that I'd like to talk to you about. Um, so the number of new provisions specific to American Indians and Alaska Natives under their law. For instance, the law permanently reauthorizes the Indian Health Care Improvement Act, ending more than a decade-long legislative battle to maintain the Indian Health Service for future generations. In addition to permanent reauthorization, Health, um, health reform strengthens the entire Indian Health Service delivery system, workforce, and care. The law provides new opportunities for IHS, tribal, and urban Indian facilities to collect additional revenues, offer more services, and, service, and serve their patients more effectively. The ACA also builds a pipeline for new healthcare professionals. This means more nurses, um, physicians, psychologists in Indian country. Um, the law also establishes new insurance marketplaces to help control the cost of health insurance and allows individuals to have access to affordable coverage. The, these marketplaces will provide special exceptions and opportunities for members of federally recognized tribes to enroll in health insurance plans. And I'll discuss that here in just a few minutes. Um, so in regards to the health care and federal trust responsibilities, the passage of the Affordable Care Act marked a continued commitment to the historical and or historical and unique legal relationship with tribes. Healthcare reform reaffirms the federal commitment to provide healthcare based on 
hundreds of treaties and numerous laws and Supreme Court decisions. The law supports, strengthens, and recognizes the entire IHS delivery system as a primary health system for American Indians and Alaska Natives, all the while providing new opportunities to assess affordable and free health insurance through a variety of programs. Other ACA um, opportunities, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, IHS has new opportunities as a health care delivery system. First, IHS has new authority to expand services. The reauthorization of the Indian Health Care Improvement Act, which prescribes the duties, responsibilities, and authorities of the IHS services, allows IHS to modernize its health care delivery system and permit tribal governments to make technical changes in the future. Secondly, IHS can increase providers and nurses. The IHS or the ACA can improve your local facility by utilizing provisions of the law to expand your healthcare workforce through new resources that boost the number of doctors, nurses, and healthcare providers in American Indian and Alaskan Native communities. Lastly, IHS can increase revenue through third-party billing, Medicare, Medicaid, and the CHIP program, which is children's health insurance and private health insurance covered populations, will increase payments to IHS to support both direct care and purchase referred purchase referred care, also known as contract health care services. So this will free up IHS funds for expanded services. When private and government insurance money, otherwise known as third-party billing, is added to the Indian health, health system, it will improve services for all American Indians and Alaska Natives. Um, as I said, the new law opens up many avenues for tribal and American Indian clinics, um, again, to bill insurance plans. The third party billing will add new money because tribal facilities will be able to collect reimbursement from private insurance directly. More opportunities to bill outside the IHS system will help facilitate will help facilities in areas stretch the preferred purchase referred care service dollars. Um, some of the new opportunities include um, mental and health treatment and prevention, long-term care services, dialysis services, facil facilitation of care for Indian veterans, and American Indian health programs can be expanded. So let's talk about some of the plans that we'll see on the health insurance marketplace. So each of these plans must cover the same essential health benefits. Insurers will be required to offer Plans that fit within four levels of coverage, and those are the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And the plans will vary by cost, um, will vary, and the, how they vary is by the cost and out of, or by the premiums, excuse me, and the out-of-pocket costs. This means the amount of cost sharing required will differ in those tiers. So, for example, bronze plans will have the least generous coverage with more out-of-pocket costs for enrollees, and the platinum plans will have um, the, will cost the most, but will have the less out-of-pocket cost. So incomes that qualify for lower cost, um, plans are available in the marketplace are required, oh, excuse me, just one second. To qualify for lower costs on health insurance coverage, you'll find the estimated 2015 household income and household size on the chart below. The column on the left tells you the if you may qualify for premium tax credits, lower out-of-pocket costs, or low-cost health care through Medicaid. So if you look um, at the first one, you may qualify for low premiums on a marketplace in insurance plan if your yearly income is for one person between $11,670 and $46,680. And then it goes up for two persons, three persons, four persons, five persons, and six, and so on. Um, so if your state is expanding Medicaid, you'd be eligible for Medicaid coverage for one person if you made less than the $16,243. If your state is not expanding Medicaid, then it drops back down to that $11,670. So again, um, about the essential health benefits, there are 10 of them that um, um, that all the market pl marketplace plans are required to cover. 
and these benefits um, all these plans in the marketplace um, again are required to cover the ten essential health benefits follow established limits on cost sharing including deductibles co-payments and out-of-pocket maximum costs and meet other requirements for example each issuer, each issuer must agree to offer at least one qualified health plan in the silver and gold levels of the marketplace so if we can back up to the plans there and every insurance company must offer at least one qualified health plan in the silver and in the gold level of the marketplace. There are some additional preventative um, prevention opportunities that are available too. Um, and those are cancer screenings such as mammogram and colonoscopies, vaccinations, blood pressure screenings, cholesterol or cholesterol, col cholesterol eh, screenings, excuse me, tobacco sensation counseling and interventions, birth control, depression screenings, and more. So in general, essential health benefits are the types of care you need to prevent and treat sicknesses and do not include elective or non-essential um, treatments. There are no dollar limits on essential benefits. Before annual and lifetime limits, um, there were over 60% of the bankruptcies in the U.S. were medical bankruptcies. Eliminating dollar limits on essential care ensures that the patients won't have to stop treatment or go broke when they reach their dollar limit. Insurance plans must offer, or the insurance plans that offer dependent coverage are now required to make coverage available to adult children up to the age of 26. So, in other words, children can stay on their parents' plans up to the age of 26. And then adults and dependent children under the age of 18 cannot be denied coverage for pre-existing diseases. Um, in the past, insurance companies used to be able to deny, deny people that had, for instance, cancer. Um, the insurance company may not have, um, have allowed you to enroll into their insurance plan. Now that is against the law. So in regards to preventive services, the U.S. Preventive Task Service Task Force has eliminated the Medicare deductible for colorectal cancer screening. They also revised their Part D recommend, or Part B, excuse me, recommendation regarding medications for risk reduction of primary breast cancer in women. They recommended that clinicians engage in shared, informed decision making with women who are at increased risk for breast cancer about medications to reduce the risk. For women who are, increased, who are at increased risk for breast cancer and at low risk for adverse medical effects, clinicians should offer to prescribe risk-reducing medications such as um, tamoxifen. tamoxifen. Beginning in 2014, non-grandfathered group health plans and non-grandfathered health insurance coverage offered in the individual group marketplace will be required to cover such medications for apical women without cost sharing subjects um, without cost sharing subject to reasonable medical management. Um, the new law also includes several provisions to increase access to cancer prevention services. So for instance, um, what we said before for preventive screenings, uh, colorectal cancer screenings for people between the age of 50 and 75, mammograms for women um, over 40 every one or two years, um, regular pap tests for screening for cervical cancer and coverage for the HPV vaccine, or vaccine. To, again tobacco sensation, and co-pays for Medicare covered preventive services rec also recommended by the, um, the United, United States Preventive Task, I never can say all that, um, the United States, the U.S. Preventive Task Force um, has been eliminated. The Medicare deductible for colorectal screening tests can also be eliminated. The other thing is that um, for clinical trials, we, um, for plans beginning on or after January 1st, insurers will be, not be allowed to limit or drop coverage due to an individual choosing to participate in a clinical trial. Um, grandfathered health plans are not required to comply with this requirement. 
This applies to clinical trials to treat cancer in addition to other life-threatening diseases. And we know historically American Indians and Alaska Natives have low participation rates in clinical trials. This may increase their participation. So let's talk about some of the protections for Indian country in the marketplace. There are no out-of-pocket costs if a member of a federally recognized tribe chooses Indian Health Service as their provider in an insurance marketplace network. Um, the insurance marketplace will have special opportunities and cost savings for American Indians and Alaska Natives who purchase it through insurance through them. For instance, um, again, that there will be no out-of-pocket cost if they use IHS services and there will not be any co-pays anywhere for an individual American Indians earning less than $38,010 and families earning less than $71,550 a year, which is a huge savings. So um, they're able to go, you know, where they need to go, where they want to go, and there's no um, co-pays or no deductibles for those meeting those um, income guidelines. The other important um, protection for American Indian country is that there is um, special enrollment. We're um, able to enroll members of federally recognized tribes. Um, one can enroll all year long. Um, if you know, have heard anything on the media or the radio about the health insurance marketplace and open enrollment, is that open enrollment is closed right now. Um, except for members of federally recognized tribes. Again, we have open enrollment all year long, and we can also change our enrollment status um, once a month. The other thing is we're not required to have insurance. Um, we are exempt. So members of federally recognized tribes and those um, that are eligible for, for IHS services are exempt from having to obtain any health insurance. Um, for protecting Medicare, there are cheaper drugs now. Um, again, there are free preventive services like um, wellness checks. Um, doctors are supported to better coordinate care. The law fights fraud and strengthens Medicare, and Medicare coverage is protected. One of the other important things is, um, is there's no more donut hole. Medicare D or Medicare prescription drug coverage, as it's known, covers the gap between your prescription drugs need, your prescription drug needs, and the original Medicare. Original Medicare included basic drug coverage. However, many Medicare beneficiaries have prescribed drug needs outside of what Part A and B covers. Medicare Part D is a supplementary insurance, and original Medicare is required for Part D. Again, the, the Affordable Care Act is finally closing the Medicare Part D donut hole. Immediately after enactment, the law provided a $250 rebate to seniors who hit the, gov the coverage gap in Medicare prescription drug program. In addition, Medicare beneficiaries will start to receive discounts on brand name drugs and the coverage gap will close completely in 2020. Medicare Part D, just so you know, does not count as a minimal essential coverage. The type of coverage that counts for having health insurance on its, own, on its own is only Medicare Part A and Medicare Part C. So tax credits are only available to those available through the health insurance marketplace and only available during open enrollment unless you qualify for a special enrollment period or if you are on um, Medicaid or CHIPS, which can be obtained any time of the year. Tax credits are based on income. In most states, anyone making less than 400% of the federal poverty level, which we call FPL, can get some type of tax credit on the marketplace, on the marketplace plans. The federal poverty level adjusts for inflation each year, allowing more and more Americans to qualify for more cost assistance. Those making under 400% of the FPL, or federal poverty level, will have access to tax credits. Those making under 250% of the FPL are eligible for cost sharing reductions um, on silver plants, and those making under 138 of the FPL in states that expanded Medicaid are eligible for Medicaid. And I have a slide coming up next that will show a graph of those. So 
currently through the advanced premium tax credit or currently eligibility for premium tax credit is determined by the 2014 federal poverty guidelines so if you look um, as we said before the 100 percent FPL is 11,670 and those that um, make that or more for one person are eligible for tax credits through the marketplace the other thing is I'd like you to look at the column of the 300 percent federal poverty level for those persons if you are a member of a federally recognized tribe and you are um, one household and you make 300 less than 350 or thirty five thousand ten dollars you are eligible for no copays and no deductibles no matter where you go and it goes on down the line so for two for a household of two it's forty seven thousand one hundred and ninety for a household of three fifty nine thousand three hundred and seventy and so on and so forth so that's a huge um, cost savings that can be applied to our members of federally recognized tribes so did your state expand Medicaid here is a graph or a map of states that expanded Medicaid um, the blue one Funds are plans to continue full or partial um, Medicaid expansion. Um, the yellow are those that do not plan on expanding. And the light blue or purple, depending on what it looks like on your screen, are undetermined at this time. So as you can see, um, oops, North Dakota should be blue. I'm not sure why that's not. They did expand Medicaid. Um, South Dakota did not. So let's talk about the exemption a little bit. You might be exemption. You might be exempt from a payment if you are eligible to receive services at the IHS clinic, or you have services through your employer, or purchase insurance on your own. You're also um, eligible to fund the ex um, exemption of the tax penalty if you are a member of a federally recognized tribe. Or eligible for IHS services. <clears throat> also, if you have to spend more than 8% of your household income on the cheapest qualifying health insurance plan, even after tax credits or tax subsidies, you are exempt from the tax penalty. Um, so, how much is a fine for not having insurance? Um, persons that who can afford health insurance but chose choose not to buy it um, must pay a fine known as the individual shared responsibility payment in 2014 so people that are doing their taxes this year if they did not have insurance the fine is $95 per person and $47.50 per child under the age of 18 with a maximum um, of up to $285 per family or 1% of the yearly household income, whichever is higher. Um, in 2015, it does increase. It increases to $325 per person, or 2% of the income. And in 2016, it increases even more to $695 per person, or 2.5% of the total household income. Again, just so we all know and remember, um, exemption from the fine are members of federally recognized tribes or um, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement um, corporations and individuals eligible for services from the IHS. Um, also family members um, where the lowest price coverage available would be would cost more than 8% of the household income. Also individuals uninsured for less than three months of the total year of, for so if you were doing your taxes this for last year and you're doing them now, if you had insurance, um, if you were uninsured for less than three months of the year, you would be exempt from the fine. And finally, for individuals who do not file taxes because their income is too low. So how the marketplace works. Um, it's an online application. Um, there are paper applications, but um, we do prefer that you use the online and there also is a 1-800 number. If you look at the bottom of the um, screen, that's 1-800-318-2596. Um, you can call them and you can enroll over the phone or you can enroll online. This shows how to enroll online. So first you have to create an account 
and you choose a username, password, and security questions for added protection. Then you apply, and this is where you um, enter information about you and your family, including your income, household size, and other coverage you may be eligible for. Then um, after that, it generates plans that are available for you to look at. And you can see what they would cost, how much um, tax credit you are getting, and um, then the, finally, you can choose a plan that meets your needs and enroll. Coverage starts um, for members of federally recognized tribes. Um, we'll talk about it in the next slide, but it starts um, most likely the next month. Um, for those that aren't members of a federally recognized tribe, um, open enrollment does not start again till November of 2015. So to be eligible for enrollment, you must live in the service area. You must be a U.S. citizen or a national or be a, in the U.S. lawfully for the entire enrollment period. And you cannot be incarcerated. So, um, so if you still need coverage for 2015, if, they did not, if you do not have coverage, February 15th was the last day to enroll in in or change a marketplace plan for 2015. But there are special enrollment periods. And that could be if you have a change in life like marriage, having a baby, or losing other health coverage. Also, Medicaid and CHIPS you can apply um, throughout the year. So important dates for 2016 um, enrollment to be eligible for to get insurance starting in 2016 in January would be the open enrollment again starts November 1st. Um, and that's the first day you can enroll into a 2016 health insurance market plan. So this talks about insurance health start dates. So if you apply or you enroll before December 15th of this year, your coverage would start January 1st. Um, between the 1st and the 15th of the month, the first day of coverage would start the following month. After the 16th, the first day of coverage would be the second following month. So, for instance, if you, instead of enrolling on December 15th, you decided to enroll into health insurance on December 16th, um, your insurance would not start till February. 1st of 2016, whereas if you enrolled on, on or before December 15th, your insurance would start January 1st. So what do you need to apply? You need to know your social security numbers or, number, or document numbers for legal immigrants. You need to know birth dates. You need to know um, what you are what your estimated income for 2015 will be, and you could use pay stubs, maybe last year's W-2 forms, um, any kind of wage or tax statements. Um, if you have health insurance currently, you would need to know the policy numbers for that, and information about any health insurance you and your family could get from your jobs. Um, again, tribal exemptions, members of federally recognized tribes or the Alaska Native Claim Settlement Act shareholders and individuals who are otherwise eligible for services through Indian health care um, may apply for the exemption from the shared responsibility payment. Even if they apply though, for an exemption, they can still apply for a qualified health plan on the marketplace. So they can still apply for insurance just because you apply for an exemption does not mean you can still not that you can't get insurance. So it's important to remember that um, it's great to apply for the exemption so you don't get a tax penalty when you do your income taxes, but also remember that you can still apply for insurance even if you are applying for an exemption. So again, key points to remember um, are, or this goes for tribes as employers, that tribes are subject to the employer shared responsibility mandate. Um, tribal governments and subdivisions of tribal governments are not exempt. And um, they need to determine full-time equivalent, equivalent employee status, excuse me, 
and small employers with less than 50 employee employees are eligible for small business health health options that are available through the marketplace. Many tribes are considered to be large employers and they may incur an accessible payment for not offering health insurance. I know there is some talk about tribes being exempt um, from the shared responsibility, but at this moment I don't know of any new laws that have taken effect um, in regards to that. So let's go back through and see what the benefits of enrolling in health insurance. So as we learned earlier, um, that your local clinic can increase the revenues under the law because of the changes of billing practices and expanded access to insurance for individuals. We also learned that some individuals may not have to pay anything for coverage to the Medicaid and the insurance marketplace. So now think about what happens when a consumer that is insured goes to the local clinic. The local clinic bills for the services provided and gets paid from the federal government or the insurance company for those services. That means they haven't lost any money seeing the consumer, which means there will be more resources for the clinic because insurance companies will pay for those costs instead of the purchase referred care or contract health services. So all in all, this means that consumer health care needs will be met and the consumer is helping our community leverage more um, contract health service dollars or preferred referred care dollars. So that's all I have. I want to thank you for your time and I am available to take any questions. It is a lot of information um, and if you have any questions, here is my contact information. Feel free to, um, if your question does not get answered during this session, feel free to email me, call me. Um, also, um, please visit our website. We have some great information on our, on our website about ACA. We also have a calendar of events um, that shows where we are going, enrollment events that we are having in North Dakota and South Dakota. Um, so if you're in that area, we may be coming to your area. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ms. Duran. We appreciate that engaging uh, presentation and discussion that you presented in this webinar. And if any of the attendees have questions, we ask you please type them into the question box and we will read those. I may turn over, Josh, uh, you're on the line. Unmuted. Questions that come in. Yes, um, okay, we just got a question, in fact, as you were asking, and that's, do you share data with IHS? So, we don't collect data. Our navigator program does not collect data, so we don't actually share any data with IHS um, that I, no, we don't. Um, does the health insurance marketplace, I don't know for sure if they do or not. I don't believe so. Um, again, I think that would probably be a question for IHS. But at the Navigator program does not sh and share data with IHS. Thank you. Um, if there's any other questions, we'll leave it open for a little bit longer. It can take a little while to type, I know. One of the things that we've been doing, I guess, um, is we've been going out to the local communities and doing enrollment events. They've been very successful. Um, we try and partner at health fairs. We also go to the tribal colleges. Um, we know many students may not be insured. Um, we also know that students, um, sometimes youth can sometimes think they're invincible, but um, you know, things do happen, um, playing basketball, whatever, so um, it's very important to um, to reach out to all populations and see what they may be eligible for. We do what we call an estimator calculator. It takes like four minutes, and it's like four basic questions that um, we ask that can tell you what you'll be eligible for, um, how much tax credits you may get, um, and how much the health insurance may cost you. So we have navigators across North Dakota and South Dakota. Again, if you go to our website, um, there's a map there that you can click on that's interactive, and it will give you contact information to a navigator closest to you.
All right. There's a couple of uh, questions regarding if the slides will be uh, shared. They will be sent to all attendees uh, later today or tomorrow, most likely in the morning. Um, that's all the questions that have come in. There were a lot of people wondering about the slides. Um, I guess well, we can guess. Call, it, call it good here, or unless you have more to, that you want to talk about. No, I just want to say again, please feel free to call or email me if you have any questions, concerns, or if you have somebody that's interested in health insurance, um, definitely give me a call or email me, and I can direct them to the closest navigator in their area in the North Dakota and South Dakota. Um, across the United States, if you go to healthcare.gov um, and you click on Find Local Help, it will show um, navigators and um, that are closest to you that can help you in person. Um, so, and if all else fails, call me. I can find a navigator um, across the United States um, for you. We do get a couple more uh, questions just popped up if you have time to answer a few more. Sure. sure. Um, do you track clients who are or are not able to obtain insurance to see if they follow up with the recommended screenings? We do not. We um, our program does not track health data like that. We um, do track the people that we enroll, how many we enrolled, if they're from North Dakota or South Dakota. Um, IHS may be tracking that, but we do not. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any discussion of South Dakota expanding Medicaid? I have not heard of any um, at this time. And one more is, on the tax credits people receive, do they have to be paid back? So they do not. The ch so it all is based on the income that you make. So for instance, for this year, to enroll into a health insurance plan and to find out about the tax credits, it's based on how many in your family, your age, and how much that household that you taxable income that's reported to the IRS. So that's how, how they figure out how much of a tax credit to give you. So, for instance, if you, um, for example, said you were making, for one person, um, for this year, $25,000. Um, and then throughout the year, you find out, oh, I'm making more than that. Um, what you would do is then you would call the marketplace and let them know that your income has changed that will um, adjust your tax credits accordingly. Um, what you don't want to do is report $25,000 um, that you're making and then at the end of the year you ended up making $40,000 because then you may have to pay some of those tax credits back. So it's important to keep the marketplace informed of any changes of income and it's very easy just by calling their 800 number and reporting a change of income. All right. Another question came in. It says, uh, can a married partner who is not Native American get health insurance with their insured spouse? So that's a good question. So they can get health insurance. They're eligible for their um, the open enrollment period all year long um, because they are married to the American Indian person. So they have that um, eligibility to enroll all year long. They, um, the special provisions of the no copays and no deductibles, if you make less than the 300% of the federal poverty level, that only applies to the member of the federally recognized tribe. It does not apply to the non-native member. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, no more questions have come in. Um, I hope no one's typing away. Well, thank you, uh, Josh, for Josh. Thank you for facilitating the uh, the question portion, and, and also thank you, thank you for your uh, presentation, Mr. Ron. We really appreciate your time and the information that you shared. And thank you for attending the National Native Network Technical Assistance Webinar. The post webinar survey link will come to you by email today. Please complete this survey and indicate whether you'd like to receive any continuing education credits or a certificate. In our language, uh, we say miigwech, which is thank you.